everyone, I'm back. Yes, it was a nice week in Ameland. And um, I've done a lot of beach combing. There was not much driftwood, and that was really disappointing. But I did get some. <clears throat> I'll show it to you in a bit in another video, maybe. I just want to do um, a pour because someone asked me to do something that I've never done before. And that sort of stuck in my mind, and I'm really eager to do that. And what it is is... Um, they asked me to punch holes in the, uh, in the cup, as you can see, see the holes that are in it. So I'm going to put the paint in and then really quickly put it like that. And then the paint will come out of the holes, but first I'll have to do a little pour in the middle. So that's what we're going to do. First off, this was one of the paintings I did just before I left. It's nice and dry now. And um, um, my husband really likes this one. I don't know why. I thought it was just a little bit busy, but he was really all about this painting. As you can see, it has those swoopy cells in them and then the, the ribbon things that I put on. So this really worked out well. And it is a, a nice piece. So I'm gonna be uh, varnishing this one pretty soon. I think in a week, then it'll have rested for about almost three weeks. So that's what we're gonna do. And that same weekend I did this one. Now you can pick it up. Everything that is this color is metallic. So that's sort of metallic gold. And um, I find that this metallic, it's uh, from Reeves, is the one that works best. So it sort of does come up or stays the way you pour it because even here you can see these lines they didn't sink through so that's pretty cool and it did some selling and as you can see here it's all very much on the uh, surface of the painting so that's pretty uh, for me it's pretty amazing because I usually lose a lot of uh, metallic when I pour it but this really worked out well crazy colors not too fond of all those crazy colors but um, overall, I think it's a, a nice, it has a nice flow to it. And that's what makes it sort of um, appealing to the eye. Okie dokie. Now, I had another comment that someone said, when you walk around in your studio, don't drag your feet. <laughs> the comments I get, guys, it's unreal. Uh, the thing is that... Um, when I'm in my studio, I am uh, I have slippers on and they're a little bit big, so they just drag over the floor. But come on, what's what's the problem, guys? So now when I'm walking um, in the studio, I'm sort of conscious of uh, <laughs> dragging my feet over the floor. Okay, I mixed up all these colors. Uh, this is a metallic. But I put in some uh, mica, extra mica, to make it a little bit more shinier. And these, this is the colors that I'm uh, going to do. This one is the burnt sienna. This is the Prussian blue. This is a homemade uh, turquoise. And this is a copper metallic. Now with that, this is uh, Naples yellow with a lot of titanium white because I do want it to be uh, just a little bit lighter than it is. This is another homemade uh, turquoise color. This is my Van Dyke Brown with a little bit of uh, orange just to warm it up just a little bit. I like it to be sort of chocolatey color. And then I have another cup of homemade turquoise. Now this one here is a uh, deep aqua that is with all Windsor and Newton deep aqua and I added a lot of uh, titanium white to that one more to get the same sort of shades you know three of those and I want it <clears throat> not to be um, one you know being much darker or lighter than the other so they sort of blend together now these are the colors we're going to work with the first one I'm going to do is a small one just to see how this works out. So um, what I do have to do is still add the silicone. Oops, oops, oops. 
Okay, silicone guys, I get a lot of questions about the silicone. Um, the silicone is, um, I don't really use a lot of spray silicone anymore. I did, you know, in the earlier days, in these, uh, that I just did a little spritz in all the cups. And I'm, I know that uh, Rick Chattel still uses the spray silicone. I'm not too fond of it anymore because when you heat it, there's a lot of additives here in this. It's not just 100% silicone. So as you can see here, there's a lot of stuff in there that I can't pronounce. And that's why I really don't like using it that much. Um, if I do, I will fill a little bottle outside, make sure the fumes don't get inside because I don't really like the uh, smell of it. But um, now we have silicone. What I usually use is the dimethicone thousand that's thousand is only big, uh, the uh, thickness and um, that's what I use and I just you know put a few drops in each color a little bit more if you have a, a big cup like this uh, for reference this is about 150 milliliters and you can go on Google and you can just put in um, milliliters to ounces and that'll uh, explain how much that is so when the cup is almost full, I put in just a little bit more. Now, an another question I get a lot is that people ask me, uh, in which color do you put the silicone? Well, if you pay attention to my videos, I put it in every color because I just think, well, why not? Uh, the only color I don't put it in is when I use a background color to um, color the canvas before I pour because you don't want those little dimples in there you just want the uh, background color to be nice and smooth and that's really what you want to go for so uh, as you can see I stir it pretty much and a lot of people sort of get confused about the size of the cells so they think the less they they stir the bigger the cells and the more they stir the tinier the cells but the thing is, if you have the good thickness of your paint, as you can see here in the metallic, as you can see, the silicone is already at the top. So even though we do stir it in like that, if we let it sit for a bit, you can, you can really see it happen. See that? Let me get some light in there. That's just the silicone popping on the surface. So the thing is that when you pour, if you really cannot get cells and you're having a lot of difficulty, what you want to do is add the silicone, do a quick stir, put the paint in the cup really fast, and then pour. Because if you wait too long like I'm doing now, as you can see, all the silicone is at, at the top on the surface. And we all know that if all the silicone is on the surface, if you torch it, nothing's going to happen. So remember that when you're doing your mixing and your paints and all that stuff okay now what I'm gonna do is do a tiny little pour in the middle because I'm gonna put this cup I'm gonna plop it on in the middle and then there won't be anything well there may be something there now let's do that let's just let's just mm, let it pour out you know this is all um, experimental so that's what we're gonna do now this time I'm going to do it the, the, the other way around. Normally I would start with the lightest color. This time I'm going to start with the darker color. And I don't need that much paint because this is a 15 by 15. So I'm going to try and not use too much color. And as you can see I am before I put it in, I stir again because of the silicone that will be at on the surface, so that's why I'm doing that. Now some gold. Well, not gold, it's bronze, but it's nice and shiny. Okay, we got it. I think that's more than enough for a 15 by 15. So we're going to put it in the middle. There it goes. Let's see what happens. There's not much happening. And why that is, is because there's a sort of a vacuum. So we need to put a hole in the middle on top. <coughs> so.
So let's see how we do that. There it goes. See that? <laughs> that worked. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff pouring out. And while it's still moving, that to me it says that there's still a lot of paint in the cup, you know, so when I pull it up, it'll blop, go all over the canvas. But we have to pick it up now. It's time. Okay, now, not something that I'm thinking, wow, I want to do a lot of these, but we'll see what happens when we pour it over the sides a little. Nah. It's sort of the same. It didn't do much, but it was a good idea, and we did try. So, ooh, I do love those colors. Are they beautiful? But now I really got to be quick and torch it. Ooh, that is beautiful. A little bit down there. I'm not going to torch the corners. I think this is kind of... Uh, Kind of what I really like. I like this. Okay, what I do need is a little pellet knife because I gotta do my corners. And because it's so small, I really wanna uh, be sure that my color matches what I'm putting on the corners because with little canvases, you can really, you know, you just see more. That's that one. Ooh, that's nice. Wow, this really turned into a really pretty little painting. Yeah, wow. Now I'm sorry it wasn't bigger. <laughs> isn't, isn't that always the, the case? I see a lot of metallic and I really like that. I'm so glad it didn't, didn't all uh, sort of mess up and go to the bottom, sink down. Okay, now, uh, what I just did here on the side is, some of you have uh, asked me, you know, how do I get rid of those little divots or little dimples or whatever you call them, but what you can do is when you see them appear, just give it a little bit, give your painting a little bit of rest. And I do see that I'll have to uh, torch it again because I see some little uh, air popping up, but wow, this is a beautiful little painting. Okay, let's just get rid of those air bubbles and do it really fast, otherwise we're going to make more cells and that's what we don't want, right? That's it. Now, here you see, if you, depends on if you're watching on a computer, if you're watching on a, on a mobile, you won't see it, but here's a little bit of canvas uh, exposed. And that's the thing that, when you see that, you can still fix it while it's wet. Because you let just let it flow over the side, and once it's dry, you will not see anything. You will just think it never was there. So that's what you can do when you're pouring. And of course, give it a little time. You don't have to be quick, and you don't have to put it in a drying rack. Just let it sit there for a bit. And I see here I have two little bits of uh, canvas exposed. Here it's okay. Well, I do see a little one there. So that's covering that one. And now I'm matching my paint from the table. And that's important. That's what I want to stress all the time. Don't just add blobs of paint. You really have to match a little bit of color so that it appears that it's just, you know, that's how you poured it. A little bit here, I like that little bit of a touch of brown. But that's it. That's what we're going to do. That's how we're going to leave it. Now, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to try and give you a close-up, but I'm not going to take my iPad down. Okie dokie. There you go. That's nice. I like those colors. They do uh, They do something. 
Although I am seeing that the uh, metallic, let me get in focus again. I do see that the metallic is sort of disturbing the cell structure, but some people do like it, you know, that it's not all cell-like, but you have a, a sort of a different sort of cells. But for me, this is all about color and I love the colors and it does a lot. So I'm going to leave it just as is. So now I'm just with one finger, I'm swiping the uh, bottom of the canvas so it doesn't drip and I'll put it on the table to dry. That was that. Now I'm looking to see if I got some photo paper. Yes, I do. And first off, I'm going to just press it in here and pull it up. Now, as you can see already, it sort of went muddy. And that's really the whole thing about um, the thickness of that paint. See, when it doesn't do that, when it doesn't go all muddy right away, that's uh, sort of a sign that your paint is on the thick side. And when you do get a little bit muddy like this, that's a sign that your paint is, well, almost okay, almost perfect. But the downside is that you can't use much of the paint that's uh, spilled on the table because if you touch it once or twice, it turns into one color. And as you can see here, it's sort of an antique green. And I'm just trying to get a little bit of different things going on here. So I'm going to pull it together, see how it flows. That's kind of nice. Yeah. I'll show you up close. There you go. That's kind of nice to look at. I am going to give it one more little torch. Okay. This one we're going to let dry too. So our vacation was uh, really, really uh, a nice time we had. We had a beautiful uh, house, which I showed you before I left. And it was exactly like the pictures, so there was nothing different. That was kind of cool. And um, the weather was okay. It, it wasn't really weather where you could say, oh yeah, we're going swimming every day. Although some people did swim in that weather, but I don't know why. I'm more of the... Uh, Caribbean type where the water is I don't know almost 30 degrees I hope but um, they were swimming and they were doing their thing I did make a couple of uh, videos with the drone but I need some practice because looking back at the video first thing the first day I, I went to do some videoing um, the batteries were almost dead so I made two really short videos then I filled the uh, I charged the batteries and the second day, it was a bit better. See, that's kind of nice too. And um, But I do know that I need some uh, practice in flying that thing because, uh, why is it, doesn't it get in focus? Okay, here it goes. So I need some practice uh, on flying that thing. And then next time you'll get better videos. I sort of like when it goes swoopy. Let's swoop it a little bit. There it goes. Yeah, okay. Okay, guys, I think that's enough because this is almost green. See that? Just two or three swipes and it's totally green. I do like the color, though. It does do something for me, but we'll just leave it like that. So I'm going to uh, clean that. Oh, that's another question I had. If I clean the table or whatever I do, uh, I'll repeat that one more time. Um, sometimes, like now, I will uh, clean this little bit off. Oh, wait a minute. I see something happening here. I want to do something. But I'll clean uh, this plastic off. But at the end of the day, I take off uh, this plastic that I put on my table 
and I throw that out with all the cups that are empty and uh, don't worry about where that goes because um, it gets uh, taken care of in a very environment friendly way. I just wanted to do that. I don't know why, but I did. And I want to see what happens when I touch it. Wow, that is beautiful. Almost a shame that it's on a, on the spoon and we can't do anything with it. Oops, let's see if I can get you in focus. There you go. That's nice. I like that little thing there. But this is awesome. I wish you could really get in close, but then I'll lose my uh, audio, so we don't want to do that. But that is beautiful. Now I want to cut this out because that little bit is really stunning. Wow. Well, no. I'm just going to clean this off like I promised you guys, and I'll be right back. So see you in a bit. Love you all to pieces. I've missed you all terribly, but now I'm back and will be pouring this whole upcoming week. So see you in a bit.